Hello, this is Dr. Emma Hay Nichols, and this is the information on the latest US FDA approvals for July 22nd through the 26th, 2024. First up this week, the FDA has approved Duroxolitinib, also called Lexelvi, as a first line treatment for adults with moderate to severe alopecia areata. Lexelvi is an oral selective inhibitor of Janus kinases JAK1 and JAK2. Alopecia areata is a chronic autoimmune disease characterized by hair loss and has significant psychological and emotional impacts. The approval was based on findings from the Thrive AA1 and AA2 trials. In Thrive AA1, patients receiving duroxolitinib at 8 mg and 12 mg twice daily achieved the primary efficacy endpoint a SALT score of 20 or less by week 24, significant scalp hair regrowth began as early as 8 weeks and continued throughout the study, proving superior to the 8 mg dose. In Thrive AA2, duroxolitinib demonstrated a favorable safety profile with more than 95% of treatment emergent adverse events being mild to moderate. Lexalvi is the third JAK inhibitor to be approved for the treatment of alopecia areata. Also approved are baricitinib, also called Illumiant from Eli Lilly, and Riddlecitinib, also called Lipt Ulu from Pfizer. The approval of Duroxolitinib was granted to Sun Pharma. Also last week, the FDA has approved norethindrone acetate and ethyl estradiol, also called Femliv, and that's an oral dissolvable birth control pill. This type of birth control has been available as a swallowable tablet since 1968, but the new oral dissolvable form expands contraceptive access to patients who have difficulty swallowing. The approval of this oral dissolvable contraceptive is based on positive results from a study involving 743 women aged 18 to 45 who received the tablets for up to six 28-day cycles. This agent is the first oral dissolvable contraceptive approved by the FDA. The approval of Femlif was granted to Afaxis Pharma. Also this week, the FDA approved an expanded indication for serlipinase alpha, also called Brunura, to treat neuronal ceroid lipofusinosis type 2, CLN2 disease or Batten disease in children under 3 years of age. Brunura was a recombinant human tripeptidyl peptidase 1 enzyme and was initially approved in 2017 for children older than 3 years with CLN2 disease. This latest approval covers the treatment of patients of all ages, including those who are symptomatic or asymptomatic. CLN2 disease typically starts with seizures between ages 2 and 4, often preceded by language development delays. Renura is an enzyme replacement therapy administered by infusion into the brain. The expanded approval was based on data from study 190-203, a phase 2 open-label trial in children with CLN2 disease, including those younger than 3 years. The study demonstrated that treatment with this agent reduced the decline in motor function and delayed disease onset. The safety profile was similar to previous studies. The approval of Brunura was granted to Biomarin Pharmaceutical. Also this week, the FDA has approved paliperidone palmitate, also called erzofri, extended release injectable suspension for treating schizophrenia in adults and for treating schizoaffective disorder in adults as monotherapy and as an adjunct to mood stabilizers or antidepressants. Paliperidone palmitate is an atypical antipsychotic that helps manage the symptoms of severe chronic psychiatric disorders characterized by recurring relapses. The approval of Azofri, which is administered once a month, makes this a long-acting injectable antipsychotic, which is associated with improved patient adherence. Azofri, the first patented paliperidone palmitate long-acting injection developed in China, was granted a U.S. patent in 2023 and approved under the 505B2 pathway. The approval of Azofri was granted to Lou Pharma Group. I just want to let you know I'm opening up the AIMWI course, that's AI in Medical Writing and Editing, and that will be opening sometime this fall. Not sure when, but if you'd like to join the waitlist, you'll get notification and, um, you know, 
occasional updates, that kind of thing. So if you'd like to join that, go to learnamastyle.com forward slash waitlist. That's learnamastyle.com forward slash waitlist. If you go through this course, you'll be able to use AI to speed up your workflow in medical writing and editing ethically and securely. And if you're a medical writer or editor, you really don't want to be without this information or transformation. There's lots of AI courses out there, of course, but this one is taught by yours truly, longtime medical writer, and is specific only to medical writing and people who write about medicine and science. So check it out at learnamestyle.com forward slash waitlist. Also this week, the FDA has approved an investigational new drug, IND application for equicaptogene autolucel, also called Equicel, for the treatment of multiple sclerosis. Equicel is a fully human anti-BCMA chimeric antigen receptor autologous T-cell injection. This is the second FDA IND approval for Equicel in 2024, following its approval for refractory generalized myasthenia gravis. In an investigator-initiated trial conducted in China, Equicel demonstrated promising efficacy in six autoimmune diseases. Multiple sclerosis is a neuroinflammatory disease of the central nervous system that causes demyelination and neuronal injury, leading to neurologic syndromes and physical disability. About 85 to 90 percent of patients with MS have a relapsing, remitting form of the disease, which often progresses to secondary progressive MS, and that's characterized by progressive and irreversible accumulation of neurologic disability. The approval of Equacel was granted to IASO Biotechnology. Also this week, Johnson & Johnson has submitted a supplemental new drug application, SNDA, to the US FDA, seeking approval of esketamine, also called Spravato, as a monotherapy for adults with treatment-resistant depression. Esketamine is already approved in combination with an oral antidepressant for adults with treatment-resistant depression and for depressive symptoms in adults with major depressive disorder with acute suicidal ideation or behavior. Esketamine is a N-methyl-D-aspartate and MDA receptor antagonist that rapidly alleviates depressive symptoms by enhancing synaptic connections in the brain. Treatment-resistant depression affects approximately 30% of the 280 million people worldwide with major depressive disorder and is defined by an inadequate response to two or more oral antidepressants during the same depressive episode. This submission is based on positive results from the Phase 4 TRD4005 study, which demonstrated a rapid improvement in Montgomery Asperg Depression Rating Scale, MADRS, scores as early as 24 hours after the first dose and sustained through at least four weeks of treatment. The safety profile of esketamine monotherapy was consistent with previous studies with no new safety concerns identified. Finally, this week, the FDA has cleared the investigational new drug IND application for ZW191, a novel antibody drug conjugate targeting folate receptor alpha, which is expressed in cancers such as gynecologic and non-small cell lung cancer. ZW191 is a topoisomerase 1 inhibitor, ADC, this agent uses a novel payload, CD06519, to target folate receptor alpha, enabling it to address various levels of folate receptor alpha expression. Preclinical models have demonstrated that ZW191 has robust anti-tumor activity and a tolerable safety profile. Folate receptor alpha is notably expressed in several tumors, including in 75% of ovarian adenocarcinomas and 70% of non-small cell lung cancer tumors. The manufacturer, Zymorx, plans to begin clinical development of CW191 in the second half of 2024. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back next Monday with all the latest approvals. Please tell your colleagues about this podcast, New FDA Approvals Podcast, for staying up to date with the latest approvals. Thanks so much. Have a great week.